everyone welcome back to my channel um today's topic is about what it's like to be deaf and traveling um i traveled quite a bit actually already in my life and it's a different experience than you would think a little bit could I mean the accessibility of traveling is not there at all. Like going on a bus, a train, or an airplane. Um, it's all still not very accessible for deaf people, especially like overhead announcements and things like that. Um, I've traveled a few times by myself and they cross it up exactly sometimes so let's see I'm trying to think of specific examples that I want to tell you about so I did a lot of my traveling back when I was in college but I took the train to Indiana from Boston once by myself and that's about uh, I think it's 14 hour train ride, something like that. And it went fine for the most part. It was through the night, so like I bought it in Boston at like 5 p.m. and was just um, in a regular seat. You could pick where you could sit, so that was nice. But being deaf by myself, a few moments on that trip where like I got woken up in the middle of the night by the conductor because I was sitting in a spot like my natural at the handicap area and they needed me to move so because the person was getting on in a wheelchair but that was a little the drama like I think they got very annoyed with me because I didn't hear them I was asleep and it took me a while because I don't think they were touching me at all I think they were just saying excuse me excuse me like and I just wasn't waking up eventually somebody like nudged me in the arm to wake me up and then on the same train trip at like 3 in the morning I woke up and I noticed that we were stopped like the train wasn't going anywhere and I thought oh that's weird and and I kept hearing like overhead announcements but I didn't know what it was saying and everyone around me was asleep or I just I don't like talking to strangers sometimes so it's like I don't know why I was stopped and everything but eventually I was just like okay I'm just gonna get up and go to the dining car to see if somebody could tell me what was going on and I guess the train had hit a truck or something like that and I was like what like but yeah the train hit like a truck a box truck everybody was fine nobody was hit but like I hit like a box truck that got stuck at the tracks or something like that so it was a few hours delay to get that moved out of the way um so traveling by myself is a little uneasy for me because it's like I can I don't know what overhead announcements say and many places have not put in any kind of like um reader things you know like in Boston at the subway some of the subways have like a overhead thing in the car that's the scrolling thing that say next stop is so so um and then in like the train station sometimes they put the announcement on a big board where the um train times are the announcements are on top of that but like any time that there's anything out of the ordinary i have no idea what's going on so like an emergency situation or something happened I, I have no idea what's going on and that gets me anxious 
when I'm traveling by myself because it's like could this hurt me? Could I be in danger and not know it? No. That's just one of the ongoing things about traveling. And then recently I flew to um, England last fall and I was with my husband so we went and it was a great time and then we flew um, to Paris for a few days and that was good too. It was nice being in Paris. I don't know French so now it's like an additional barrier for me at the airport where I'm stuck. I don't know what language they're speaking and um, we were waiting for a flight home to Boston from Paris and the plane had been delayed and so the plane was delayed and we didn't know why or anything like that and it was a very crowded space and then eventually I think the plane got out there and we I didn't hear this but like eventually my husband said to me I just heard my name being called on the overhead speaker and we were like that's weird why is, he, why is his name being called so he went up to the docks to find out what's going on and he was told that he got pulled, that he's being pulled into additional security and that he has to go with these people somewhere <laughs> and my anxiety went up like triple because here I am in this airport when nobody's speaking English around me and my husband is here and so he must tell me if there's anything important that I need to know. Like I, I'm more relaxed traveling with somebody because uh, they help me and he asked the person that like, can my wife come with me and they were like no. And I was like, he was like, my wife is deaf, I don't want to leave her alone. And they're like, no, sorry, you have to go, you have to leave your wife behind. And I'm like, freak out. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? So like, when I bought airplane, that's another thing that's really inaccessible to me because I have no idea what group's boarding, what see the board and like they do that overhead announcement for that so I've loved times what I've done in the past and I've gotten in trouble for this a few times is that I just line up right away as soon as I see people going onto the plane I line up and go on I talk my way on earlier than I'm supposed to be because I'm like I'm deaf come on give me a break here like I can't hear the announcement of what seats are being seated. Um, so I, back to the story, my husband's gone somewhere. And I'm just like, as soon as I saw that people were going to board, I basically went up and got in line. And the woman tried to like tell me, oh, no, you have to wait, you have to wait. And I'm like, no, let me on. Like, I yelled at her, said, you're letting me on. My husband's right there. I'm deaf. I don't want to be by myself. And she let me on. Uh, but, like, I love travel. It was so nice seeing the world. But, Transportation is still really inaccessible to deaf people. Like they don't realize how much little detail the information is spoken in the overhead announcement, and it's just really frustrating that I like, will done that more accessible in that sense. Yeah, it'd be great. Like if I could just go get onto a plane without any issue, then. I don't know. I would travel a lot more by myself if I felt more comfortable doing so. There's only been a, a few times that I've traveled by myself and something always happens when I travel by myself. 
Like I'm just thinking about a past time of travel by myself and there's always something like tracking my back, being told that my um, back is over the weight limit. So I'm just like, <laughs> trying to unpack and repack. Um, but I think the landscape is here, so I'm gonna cut this short. I do love traveling. I would love to talk more about like some of the tips and tricks that I've developed over the years for being able to travel, especially on my own, which I don't do that much. But all right, thank you for listening today, and I hope you've enjoyed my channel today. Don't forget to subscribe and like my channel, and I'll see you another day. Bye.